You're listening to Superpower Mamas on the Superpower Up podcast, the show that embraces the art of soulful parenting. Hello and welcome. I'm Laura Greco and you're at Superpower Mamas. We're so excited to be with you today. Our topic is what areas of personal growth enhance the parenting experience. And I'm here today with Allison Livingston, and I'm so excited about her story. Allison is a mom of a teenage daughter, or two two teenage daughters, excuse me, and um, she's also a conflict resolution mediator. Her work began in 2005 when she was seeking a way to relate to her oldest daughter, who was a spirited four-year-old. Allison knew that she needed help to understand how she could be successful when all she felt was triggered and challenged. We will learn more about Allison as we go through this interview, but I am so excited and I want to welcome you, Allison, to the show. Thank you so much. It's wonderful to be here. Yeah, and I'm so excited that our listeners are here to hear your story. So um, I want to also say thank you for coming in and listening. Um, so I went over your site and read about your, your beautiful experience. Um, and I love that you had the, um, really the forethought to realize that strength doesn't mean standing alone, but it meant joining in with others. So when I ask you this first question, I'm so excited to ask you, what is your mama superpower? So I uh, contemplated this a lot because I love the idea that we all have superpowers and really believe that. And I think mine is becoming the CEO of my reactions and just knowing how biology works into our daily lives. And it has helped me so much with my own children because we want to be our best and we don't want to dump our anger or upset onto them, but that ends up happening. And I was really frustrated with that. So my superpower is to become the CEO so that I can go back to center instead of parenting from this reactive, upset, triggered place. Beautiful, beautiful. And you did touch, I love this. Um, And um, you did touch, of course, on how this assists you with your children. But would you like to expand a little bit more on that? And also, what really brought you into the work you do? Like this was something, this is a personal journey uh, at first, right? Yes. So would you like to? I uh, say, go ahead. Yes. So I, I say that my daughter was spirited and I bet a lot of you can relate that that is a euphemism for uh, not cooperative, um, passionate, intense, uh, challenging, obstinate, all of those words. And, Mm. And I was really struggling as a parent because we would get into these crazy power struggles and she would be screaming and shouting, no, and I would be, wait, I'm in charge. I'm supposed to be able to handle this. And I would should myself. And it was just this really hard dynamic between her. And, um, and so this was really out of a, a desperate place that I uh, learned these tools about how to recognize when we were both triggered and wonderfully that there are tools and there are steps we can take when we're in that really reactive emotional place so that we can come back to a centered place, which is where we can connect from. And I found out about this in my work as a mediator and um, just really um, worked with steps of how to be with when I was super reactive, reacting to her, she was reacting. And how could we bring our, both ourselves, um, you know, back to this calm place. And it's, it's not at all about just being calm. It's about being real. And so how could I be both real and um, in tune with what my life energy was wanting? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's about working with our thoughts, our emotions and our values and how those flow, and 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 what to do when we're spun out and in reaction. Mm-hmm. Love that you mentioned values. Um, 
Yeah, because um, what I'm hearing here is like it started out as your personal journey it, and it became, of course, a business. And we'll talk about that after the break. But right now, um, I want to call out something that you said that I think is so beautiful. And that is I didn't hear anywhere where you turned the attention or blame to the child. Yeah. That's such a key piece. I'm glad you picked up on that because I have, um, I'm a very kinetic learner and Mm -hmm. I have these gestures in my work and that we so focus outward on external things to keep us safe. And we want to change the stimulus, you know, what's happening. My daughter is wrong. She's, you know, that's where our mind goes so often. And, and the, the, the teaching is to put your hand towards yourself, towards your heart so that you can realize if I'm upset, my stuff has been activated. And that's something I do have control over. We often don't have control over the other person who is stimulating us, whoever it is, our child or our boss or our, someone who's road rage driving. Um, and so for me, the, the, the key is to come back and realize, oh, I'm triggered. What am I thinking? What am I feeling? And what am I really valuing? How can I get back to that? Because that's where all the limitless energy is. Well, and this is beautiful because when you're not turning attention to blame, either on the other person or yourself, you really, um, this is about taking, realizing that you're not a victim of the circumstance, but you actually are empowered to move through it with grace and ease. That's what I hear. Yeah. And I love that. Exactly. Yeah, and in my work with with clients and and mamas especially, um, what I've discovered is that even in my own experience as a mom myself, that what I took charge of with on um, an inter in an internal way created the experience on the outside. So if I was frustrated and angry or 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 pressured or scared or you know whatever it was, that was all being communicated out. And my child didn't feel safe. And so they would lash out, of course. And yeah. so um, it was, I love that we take it internal, not as blame, but as awareness so that we can create what we really want. Yeah. And it's so hard to do because yes. when we're in reaction, we're unconscious and we're just in that fight, flight, freeze. And, mm. and we end up putting it on towards our child and then they get all that really intense energy. And so what a beautiful relationship we can create when we can catch ourselves. And it's hard. I've yeah. been doing it for years and just have a couple of tools because we want to grab onto that lifeline so that we can get to that awareness you just spoke of. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? We have to take a break for the moment, but we're going to get back into this. Um, It's a really juicy conversation. Um, So Allison, can you uh, let people know where they can find you? Yeah, I have a website. uh, It's called five steps to connect and it's the number five S T E P S T O C O N N E C T.com. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, so we've been speaking with Allison Livingston on what areas of personal growth enhance the parenting experience. And we'll be right back. You're listening to Superpower Mama. So hold on. Are you here to change the world? Do you talk about things like vibration, frequency, awakening, and consciousness? Are you pretty sure you have superpowers? The Superpower Net is unlike normal coaching programs and conscious communities. We provide training, intuitive guidance, peer-to-peer learning, intensive one-on-one coaching, and a high vibration network of people just like you. When you join the net, you get 24-7 access to a collaborative group of people who support you as you master your personal power and unlock your superpowers. If you are ready to use your superpowers to change the world, then join the Superpower Net today. Visit superpowerexperts.com slash the net to learn more. Welcome back. You're listening to Super- Superpower Mamas and our topic is what areas of personal growth enhance the parenting experience. And I'm with Allison Livingston, and I'm so excited to move forward in this conversation because we've been really um, focusing on um, moms as, as parents having, or, or, you know, dads having the power to 
um, really step into solution finding rather than blame and reaction. And we were just before the break saying how challenging that can be for us. Now, Allison, I just want to ask you a question um, because I think this would really be helpful is um, I know that I've explored so much of this, but I know your research and what you studied. So I want to highlight some of that um, to the listeners. So I'm going to ask this question. Why is it that we, what do you think um, or what have you learned and experienced that really gets us in that reaction when that's really not what we want? As well. So our, our limbic system is designed to keep us safe and on a dark street at night, uh, it's, it's va- valuable and wonderful. But now in our emotional connections, in our relationships, it is, is going overboard. And so we think thoughts that trigger that feeling of not being safe, like we were in a dark alley. I have a image that I show about being chased by a vicious wolf. Mm -hmm. And that is physically what happens to us when we think a thought of my child is being disrespectful. Mm -hmm. This is wrong. Mm -hmm. And so our heartbeat goes fast, our breathing gets shallow, we get tense. And the lifeline that I found that helps me come back to my center is, is tuning into my body. I call it body scan. And if we can just notice those physical sensations that are happening, that mm-hmm. gets us back to the moment of now and mm-hmm. takes us out of these thoughts that we're spinning out in. And that's okay. a wonderful Great. way to mm-hmm. get back to that centered place where we want to, so we can tune into what we're feeling and what we're valuing. Yes, yes. And it also helps us, to, your explanation has, and I just like to um, highlight this, helps us to see that it's, we're not having these um, react, reaction um, circumstances because we're a bad person, right? <laughs> or a bad mother sure. or whatever. It's, it's absolutely not about that. It's all about yeah. um, the physical um, reaction. But I would like to take this a step further, and I think that you uh, touch on this in your research and work, is, is the idea of um, what we've learned and experienced in life and how that right. relates to our reaction um, response. Yeah, so uh, Dan Siegel does a great job of explaining this. He's the neuroscientist who's really done the forerunner of this work, that we have implicit memories and any time we've had a strong emotion that hasn't been uh, sort of felt and expressed, but instead has been stuffed and uh, repressed and numbed, mm-hmm. it gets stuck in our bodies to get later re-stimulated when a similar instance happens again. And boy, our children are amazing at re-stimulating all those stuck places from our own childhoods. Yeah. And so the healing work is to realize this is just our biology and that we do have control over what we think. And, and the big elephant in the room is the whole feeling part. And it, feelings are painful, uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. And I had spent my entire life trying to not feel anger, anxiety, shame, stress, fear, and come to find out that the actual way through is to experience them. Yes. And it's so counterintuitive and yes. it's so hard that we need to support ourselves doing this work. Yes. Yes. And this is so true. Um, I know from my own experience coming from my background, you know, there's a lot of pain and, and the, of course it's natural. And, and also, you know, not to place blame on anyone that we've you know been raised with or whatever, but the whole experience of a child is, is that they're going to see it. A children see it. And we saw it in a certain way on the level of what we understood at the time. So it may not even been like an abusive relationship, in any way, but right. it it was our impression of it. Yeah. yeah. Our perspective of our parents didn't mean to shame us. They right. didn't mean to get angry at us, but they didn't know any different because their parents didn't teach them how to mirror and validate 
which is what we really all yearn for to be seen and to be accepted as we truly are. And yeah. Surprisingly, that's hard to do. <laughs> yeah, I always say that. I say that so much. You know, all our children, all the bells and whistles out there, all our children really want is to be really seen and to be really heard and to know that they're valued and loved for who they be, right? Yeah. So yeah. this this brings us also to the idea of um, self acceptance, and as a mom, you know, there's always that that line, you know, of how much is she to be in her autonomy and how much is she to be a parent. And I want to ask you what you have learned. Um, what what do you see as far as the value of autonomy of a mother? Yeah, that's a wonderful question because one of my key principles is care and connection for ourselves first, that yeah. we all matter. Our children matter and we matter. It's not either or. And so to keep coming back to that and give ourselves a gesture of support because we were born also whole and worthy and, and perfect. And so it's, it's hard because we've lived these lives and had so many thoughts of I'm not enough and, um, and we should ourselves, I should be different. I should be thinner. I should be faster. I should be able to handle this situation. And mm -hmm. instead it's really just get out that gesture of support and know that you are born just whole, whole and worthy and abundant and exactly as the universe wants us to be and so how to keep going back to that centered place of abundance instead of spinning out in our thoughts of lack and shame and blame yeah yeah and as we take a moment to absorb that you know it, it um, helps us to understand the depth of our ability to do that for ourselves is exactly what we're able to offer to our children so I call it a non-negotiable, you know, it's like you're in training as a, like an athlete almost, you know, to, to um, enhance your experience so that you have something to give to your children. Right. And it's really focusing on the inside for your worth, not on your outside for how you yeah. look or what you have, all those things. Yeah. And so our society. Keep coming back. Right, our society is so focused on outside. We're taught to measure up all the time, um, and I love that this is become becoming such an awareness. I call it a, a mama movement. You know, I feel like there there is one, and that um, the more of us that become aware of that, how valuable it is to both our sons and daughters. You know, to uh, yeah, to see that. Ber Brene Brown says it so well. I'm imperfect, and I'm enough. And you want to tattoo it on your forehead or your hand and just as a mantra, repeat it to yourself yes. hourly. Yes, yes, yes. I, I once um, heard an illustration. I thought it was so great. Um, it was about the use of a table. You know, you have a table that is smooth and beautiful and it's great for drawing on, right? And, and for doing things that require a flat surface. And so you might look at another table that's a rough cut as an imperfect table. However, is it imperfect or is it just imperfect for the purpose that you're looking to use it for? For example, it does make a great work table, right? So we're perfect for our purpose. And uh, wow. be becoming accepting with that, you know, and in my work, that's part of, that's a big part of um, what I like to help moms to see is, is, is the fact their value and the fact help them to see um, that their own self-acceptance is so critical to their children discovering their own as well. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I said it really well. So when, um, when we look at this and the work you're doing, which is beautiful. I mean, we got, when you go onto our website, mamas, please um, check out, she's got lots of great videos there and, and all kinds of information. That I think is fantastic. She really pours out offerings there. For, um, helping people but when you're looking um, at the work that you're doing Allison what do you see as like the great big picture that's bigger than life to you like what do you feel yeah. like you're working <clears throat> part of? 
That's a beautiful question because um, I really see that it's possible to have a world without conflict. Mm-hmm. I've been in the conflict resolution business and I've seen the alternative of fighting and the legal system and this whole finger pointing and blaming and judging. And, um, and we all know that that's not a beautiful world to live in. And I see a vision of if everyone could learn these empowering tools Mm-hmm. that we could stop conflict and really connect instead of being separate in our families and our homes and in the world. And um, what a wonderful thing to strive for. I love it. I love it. And, you know, I grew up during the, um, the 60s, 70s, you know, and um, there was a Vietnam War. There was the racial riots on that they would broadcast on the TV with the armed guards coming in, you know, like um, just such violence. And I used to look at it and say, why? Why? It's like a bunch of little children. I was a teenager. <laughs> so I was like, There's a, they're like a bunch of kids <laughs> don't know how to play. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, and bringing it back to our own families mm-hmm. that I have seen that I have done that to my own children. And I've seen the difference of when I can come from this place of connection and center mm-hmm. and they just glow yes. the the face of my daughter when I'm able to be the CEO of my reactions is, mm-hmm. is blossoming. And yeah. when I'm not connected and I'm in my spin out of my reaction and I shame and I direct my anger at instead of at the sky, I direct it at her. Mm-hmm. And then she just, you know, defends and shrivels or comes back with her own anger. And so it's so tangible to me what's possible. Yes. So that's why I'm so passionate about getting these tools out in the world. And, and what a great experience for your daughters um, to, to go through this process with you because I don't ever see that it necessarily means we have to be perfect. I just feel that it's all about knowing the tools and being able to say you're sorry and really to live in love and kindness towards one another and accept that each of us has limitations and, are, and we're growing too, you know? Yeah. And that the limitations... And I love that you... Go ahead. Yeah, I just I said I love that you said that because the key I found is the owning kind of what you just said. Yeah. It's not that I'm perfect. It's yeah. not that I can't be angry. Mm-hmm. It's that I direct my anger at the ground or the sky, not at my child. And I own that there's a thing in within me that's been activated. It's not their fault. Right. I so I can process and work with it. So it's how to do both. It's, it's okay to be angry. It's okay to react. We are biologically going to do that. Excellent. So yeah. it's it's give ourselves support and then own it. Yes. And make a repair. Say I'm so sorry. I was tired and I had a bad day at work and I did not mean to unload all that on you, mm-hmm. honey. And um, I just want to let you know that that was my stuff and I'm sorry I directed it your way. Love it. And I'm going to play the devil's advocate here for a moment because could yeah, it be yeah. could it be that um, a response to that would be and I'm, I'm counting on your answer here. Um, oh yeah, well you you know that's just an excuse <laughs> about your work or whatever. So yeah, and and yeah. and that we we all get um, out of you know our I say what ch- the first thing to check in is what is your state. Are you mm-hmm. tired, hungry, afraid? Just notice that. And it's no excuse to direct something at someone else. Mm-hmm. So that's why you just really need to get to your authentic place and say, I'm, I own it. That was me. That was my stuff. And, and I, I directed lo- it at you. Yeah. And I love that you said that you, what you've done with your child when this happens is by explaining, not making excuses, but explaining you're giving her guidance as to what to look for in herself so that when she's seeing these things, she knows she could go into that triggered mode too. Right. Right. I see with my teenage daughters that they're doing it with their friends and mm-hmm. just notice when they're ewing mm-hmm. and shooting and that that's going to create a, a, this awful dynamic of blame, shame, judgment, and not the result they want, which is connection with their friends. Right. So. Which allows space for growth for everyone. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Because everybody then has an opportunity to go through the experience and learn more. This has been such yeah. a fascinating conversation, Allison, and I hope you come and join us again on the show. But before we go, um, first of all, share your website again, please. And then I have one more question to close with. Yeah. Yeah. It's all about becoming the CEO of your reactions and that it's five steps to connect.com. Five steps to connect.com. So Alice, just to conclude, I'd love to um, know out of our discussion, what's something that you either want to share as a tool or you want to be the biggest takeaway for um, moms, you know, what message do you have or what would you like to share that's important? Yeah, I would say there are wonderful tools on my website. And the biggest thing is for, for me, it's care for myself, that I so have a long list of to do's for all the things I should do with my kids, with my house, with everything. And it's just realize all the balls I am juggling. And look at what I am doing instead of what I've not gotten to yet. Mm -hmm. And it's just that self-acceptance of, wow, I am holding a lot and give myself a hug or put my hand on my heart and just go, this is hard and I'm showing up. Yes. And you are showing up. And that's enough. Yes. So mama, see this? You've got this. And I love that, um, and I want to highlight this part too, is that when you started as a mom and you um, recognized a challenge with your daughter for you, that you went and you know got the help. You understood that investing in yourself was the best investment to your children you could make. Yes. And I still wholeheartedly believe that. So I want to encourage anyone out there listening that you're not alone, that this won't last forever, and that there is support. Love it. Love it. Thank you so much for being here. We've been speaking with Allison Livingston, and we've been talking on the topic of what areas of personal growth enhance the parenting experience. And I think you beautifully helped us to appreciate this in a deeper way, Allison. So thank you. And I just want to say to our listeners, you know, I'm so happy you were here. Thank you for joining us. And I look forward to seeing you next time. In the meantime, I want to encourage you to really discover the love that you can have for yourself, the treasures that you hold. And what you own in your own heart is what you share with others. So go out and, and discover your superpowers and be you. We all love you. Bye-bye. Are you ready to discover your superpowers? Go now to superpowerexperts.com and take the superpower quiz today.